everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're gonna to be playing with a ton of new makeup that has come into my life recently. I have done a couple now of Sephora hauls from the Sephora Spring VIB sale. I will make sure to link both of those down in the description box in case you missed them. But on the round two, I had intended on doing a try on style video, which did not work out. So we're gonna be playing with a lot of that stuff today, as well as some stuff that I actually just got this morning. Today for me is Mother's Day. And so I got some fun new goodies that we're gonna break into as well. So if you are interested in seeing how any of those items perform and how I got this look here on my face, you're in the right place. But before we jump into it, if you have yet to subscribe, I hope that you'll consider doing so. And let's play with some makeup. So everything that we're gonna be using today is new to me. Most of it is going to be stuff that you've seen in my haul videos, which if you have not seen those, I will link those down below. I went a little bit bananas when it comes to the Sephora sale. And also with today being Mother's Day, shout out to all you mamas out there and all of you daddies being mamas out there. Um, my son, had some new stuff for me. I have spoken before about my five-year-old and his sixth sense when it comes to makeup purchases. So my husband took him to Ulta and he picked up a few things that I'm honestly kind of nervous about. So let me share those really quickly with you. He picked up a couple of things from ColourPop. It had to have been the packaging that sucked him in because I'll be very honest, this is not a collection that I had any interest in whatsoever. So he picked up the eyeshadow palette, and I believe this is a lip mask. So we're gonna give that a go. Um, he picked up from Morphe 2. Apparently they have a lip oil. This is the Glassified Lip Oil. I, I'll be honest, I don't really follow Morphe, and I definitely don't really follow Morphe 2. So that's new to me. We have a couple of items from NYX. This is an eyeliner, just kind of a dark blue eyeliner. And then the lip gloss. He has purchased so many of these for me. I think I have like four or five. This is the, this, okay, I said that in a funky way. This is Juice Gloss. This one is in the scent Coconut Chill. I really like these, to be honest with you. I have the orange one in my purse, which is like guava something. Uh, really quite like that formula. And then he grabbed a couple of things from the Ulta House brand. I'm guessing it's just because they were waiting in line for checkout and the checkout line goes past where the Ulta House brand stuff is. So he loves buying lip gloss, to be honest with you, as you have seen. Um, but he did grab another one of the Ulta House brand. These are the juice infused lip oils. This one is in the scent pineapple. I have the coconut one that I'm about halfway through with and they are absolutely lovely. Um, he also grabbed the weightless water stain. I, again, had no idea that this was a thing. I'm a little nervous about it. You know what it actually, because it's super, super liquidy, it reminds me of the Benefit tints, to be honest. Um, but this is in the shade Cherry Pie. And then they have uh, uh, an under eye brightener. So we'll definitely be giving that a try today along with everything else that I have not yet used with you from my Ulta hauls. So let me pull some packaging off and then we will go ahead and get started. As usual, we'll be starting with my base and I'm gonna go in with the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Primer. I picked this up in the second Sephora haul that I did and I'm honestly not sure really why I did. I mentioned there that I don't really struggle with the need for, you know, mattifying products, but I was hoping that because I live someplace where it is rather hot and humid in the summer, that it would help with that. So I'm really just pressing it into the T-zone and especially focusing on my nose because I have a lot of trouble with makeup sticking there. Um, this has definitely a citrusy scent to it and I can feel feel it like almost slightly tingly, which is interesting. I don't know if that's normal because like I said, I don't typically use mattifying products, so I don't know. I am gonna give this a try though. This um, is from the Ulta House brand. Uh, it is in like a little stick. It is very pink. We're just gonna 
color it in. It seems nice and emollient. And it is definitely quite light, which is nice. Sometimes I worry with the kind of pinker under eye brighteners is that they run a little bit vibrant. And this one doesn't seem to be doing that. So I'm just going to blend it out with my fingers. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Okay. Don't have any problems with that. Do I think it's the most revolutionary thing based on a first impression? No, but... It's not bad, and I'll take that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's sitting heavily or anything like that. But we are going to play with this skin tint right here. This is from Iconic London. This is the Super Smoother. And this is in the shade Neutral Fair. I am going to give it a good shake. And I think we're going to do one side of my face with the sponge and one side with a brush to see which finish I prefer. Skin tints, of course, don't have a ton of coverage. And when I used this before, I used it with a sponge and it definitely sheared out the coverage as sponges typically do. So I am really interested to see what it looks like with a brush. I do think that the color is nice. Again, with skin tints, because it is a more sheer formula, um, it is going to suit a wider range of skin tones because it does sort of sheer out. But let's start with the brush. So this is from It Cosmetics. It's the one that they did in collaboration with Alex Nani. And we're just gonna sort of tap it out. Oh, that looks nice. I like that coverage actually. It is definitely still a lighter coverage, but you can see it is evening out my skin tone and doing a bit to sort of mask a bit of my sun damage there. And it looks very nice and skin-like. That's pretty, I like that. And it doesn't seem like it's leaving any streaks with the brush. No, that looks really pretty. Let's do the other side with the sponge, and if I need to, I can build it up with the brush, um, depending on how it ends up looking. So yeah, you can still see you can see a definite difference in the view in the uh, screen. This side looks a lot more even, whereas this side has more of my natural redness peeking through. And it did absolutely nothing for this monster right here. Not surprised by that, but we are going to go ahead and build up just a little bit on my cheeks, especially, and blend that out with the brush. All in all, I do like this. I do hmm, I do so far prefer it over the rose ink one that I purchased at the very beginning of the sale. We'll see. I'm going to keep playing with it, but this one I do seem to prefer a bit. I think it's just easier to work with. The rose ink is just, it's finicky. There we go. That looks really, really nice. I will be using my new favorite favorite concealer, the Givenchy Prism Libre. Mine is in the shade N95. I'm obsessed with this. I cannot stop using it, which is kind of sad because I've got some other concealers that I feel like are getting a little bit closer to being finished. So I really should focus on those, but this is just so stinking good. Little bit on that little monster right there. It blends out so easily and so effortlessly. It wears so nicely all day. And it's just absolute perfection. It just really is. See, look at that. It is just blending in like it was always meant to be there. And there we go, perfection. I'll be quite honest with you, I've been absolutely loving my base lately 
And these products seem to be an indicator as to why. Now, the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to take a little bit of the Kosas Cloud Set, just a little bit, and put it underneath my eyes just because I like to set my concealer. But we are going to be going in with some powder, or I'm sorry, some cream per complexion products. So I'm only going to be setting underneath my eye right now. Okay. I cannot lie. I cannot stop using this. This is amazing. It is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer from Makeup by Mario. I use this literally every day. And I can't quit her. I can't. It is so perfect. So perfect. It, if you are a beginner for creams, this is the product for you because it is just so easy. It blends in so naturally. It doesn't look harsh. It doesn't look unnatural. It just looks perfect. It is amazing. I can't stop. I can't stop using it. And I have bronzers that I'm painting and I cannot stop using it. It's just so seamless and fabulous. I love it. We are going to be using a new cream blush that I picked up in the sale. This is from Tower 28. Let me open it because it is shiny. There we go. This is the Tower 28 Beach Please blush in the shade Office Hours. So it is a little bit more on the mauve side. And I just, I enjoy this formula so much. I do still think that Magic Hour is my favorite of the two, but this is really, really nice. I love this formula because, again, it is so user-friendly, especially if you're a beginner, which I am getting very much into cream products, but I still label myself as a beginner. There's still a lot that I don't quite know how I like to work with, and I really appreciate products that just make it so easy, that just make it so easy, and I don't have to second-guess myself. I can just pop it on, and I don't have to fuss with it, and it just looks so nice. Okay, I'm not going to be using a cream highlighter today, so I'm going to go ahead and finish setting my face with the Kosas powder. I am in the shade Airy, if you are curious, but this has just been a dream. It does a great job of setting my makeup without it looking heavy. It doesn't make it look matte. I have balanced to dry skin. I am quickly approaching 42. So I have some skin concerns and this just perfects everything. And I'm so happy I picked it up. Mm -hmm. All right. Now for a few more powder complexion products. I am going to be going in with the Pat McGrath bronzer. This is what the shade looks like. It is just a very nice, easy, neutral brown. Mine is in the shade Naked Desire. Sorry, I, there's so much writing on here and she has like the longest names possible. Um, so <laughs> Sometimes it's a little tough, but I really enjoy the way that this looks on the skin. I've mentioned in the past that I sometimes have a little bit of a struggle when it comes to bronzer because oftentimes they just, the lightest shades pull very, very warm. And with my undertone, that just doesn't really flatter me. But this one doesn't do that. And I really love the way that it looks. Like it just looks so healthy and nice. And I'm very happy that I picked it I have been using my Cali Ray highlighter a ton recently. I was very concerned when I hauled it initially that it was going to be too gold, but no, as long as I take a light hand with it, it honestly, it blends in really nicely and just gives a beautiful sheen to the skin. And I've mentioned before, I'm a highlighter lover. You will never get me to stop using highlighter. I mean, I guess maybe you could, but I just don't foresee that being the case. I love it. I think it just looks so pretty. And this is just such a lovely shine. A little bit on the cupid's bow, a little bit on the end of the nose. 
I find that a little bit of highlighter on my on the tip of my nose really helps to mask it when it inevitably wears away because that is the hardest place for me to keep makeup on. And then the last bit of complexion we're gonna do is some more blush. I I feel so giddy about this blush, I do. So this is from the Sephora House Collection and this is what it looks like. This is a winter shade. Like we're not gonna pretend otherwise. I'm still gonna wear it in the middle of summer, but um, I did definitely choose this shade for the name. This is called Hey Jealousy and I am a I, I love the Jim Blossoms. <laughs> I really do. Anytime any of their songs come on, it just makes me feel so happy. And even the name of this makes me feel so happy. Now it is definitely a bit intense for me because I am incredibly fair. So I do tend to go over it with a little bit of the powder as well, just to kind of mute it down a little bit because while I like the color, it can sometimes be a little bit stark against my complexion. And that's what happens, my friends, when you purchase things based on names and not shades. But as I said, I am able to make it work and I think it is really very, very pretty. All right, we're gonna do brows off camera because that's a boring thing to watch. And then we'll do some eyes. Brows are done, eye primer is on. And I've just been staring at this baby. Okay, so the pros, I mean the packaging is so stinking cute. And fun fact, when I was in high school, I was actually in Alice in Wonderland. My high school did the play and I played Tweedledee. Or was I Tweedledum? I don't remember, I was one of the two. Um, but yeah, so packaging, super cute. Color story. This is honestly why I was not really drawn to this at all. It is pastels and I am personally not a pastels person. Also, part of the reason I've just been staring at this is that it's, I don't know what to do with it. It's lacking in depth and that for me is a little strange. Um, so we are going to do what we can do to make it work. I think I'm going to take this brush right here. This is the Sephora Pro Crease 24. And I think I'm going to go into Curiouser and Curiouser, which is this sort of periwinkle shade right here. It is a matte with glitter. Not my favorite formula, not my favorite formula at all, but we are going to start building this in the crease. Ooh, we're powdery as well, goodness. And we're gonna start, yeah, there's a ton of kick up, holy cow. So, that's a thing. We're gonna just start building it and, wow, hope for the best. I think this is going to be a very shimmer heavy look because I just don't see a lot of these colors blending super well together. I don't know, maybe it's just my inexperience with pastels because they're not something I gravitate towards. I don't really own all that many, but this is an incredibly powdery shade. So just be aware that it makes a mess in the pan. And yeah, I've got quite a bit of fallout here. So let's see if we can't go ahead and just sort of wipe that away. I put away my powder brushes because I thought we were done, but we are not. <laughs> wow, like, okay, let's see if you can see that. Do you see how much kick up is there? Like, that's a lot. Not trying to complain or hate on it or anything like that, just letting you know about my experience. Now, I do think that the color itself is really nice. Um, once it's built up, it's just surprising how much kick up. I haven't had an eyeshadow with that much kick up in a, in a little while, to be very honest. All right, and because I wanna use yeah, because I want to try to use a few more shades, I think I'm going to try to blend out 
the edges with maybe this sort of peachy shade right here or should I use the green uh you know we're gonna go with the green I think we're gonna go a little bit with the green I'm just going to attempt to tap lightly into it it doesn't seem to have nearly as much kick up as this blue shade did and I'm just gonna go right over the top of it Yeah, that's a night and day difference. We're just gonna blend it out. I think that gives some nice interest to it. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the periwinkle a little bit just to bring it back into the crease. okay it's okay like I said pastels are just not not my thing I don't feel like they complement my skin very well I'm usually gravitating towards like jewel tones or grunge tones all right we're gonna stop there before I go too overboard and as far as the shamals I think I'm going to place adieu the shade right here on the outer corner and then down the rabbit hole I think I want on the inner corner but I'm also starting to think maybe this green shade here will put in the middle start raving mad since I have the green up in the crease too those might flow well together I'm not sure we're just sort of playing all of this by ear I will however be definitely using my NYX glitter primer because A, I always use it and B, I just, I'm getting the feeling that these are really going to benefit from that. Let me squeeze just a little bit onto my brush. I'm gonna be using my Sigma E57 and a little handheld mirror. Give me a little bit more precision. I'm gonna go ahead and put that all over the eyelid. And then I think I'm gonna go lightest to darkest. So I'm gonna first go into down the rabbit hole and we're gonna put that along the inner third or so. Yeah, that's pretty. It's like a, sh it's like a sea foam sort of shimmery shade. A little bit iridescent. That's, it's got a little bit of kind of a gold shift to it a little bit. That one's very pretty, I like that. And then we're gonna go into Stark Raving Mad, that green shimmer shade. We're gonna kind of sandwich it right here. That's fun. It's got a little bit of kind of a, a blueiness to it as well. See, I definitely think something like Alice in Wonderland you really could have gone for it when it comes to like shifty shades where nothing really is what it seems like it would be in the pan. I think that would have been a really smart idea. And then finally, I'm gonna go into Adieu, which is that sort of purpley shimmer shade there for the outer. Oh, that's very purpley, okay. Kind of an interesting look, a little bit of a tie-dye action there. You know, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Interesting. Hmm. All right, let's do the other eye. <laughs> let's do the other eye and see how it comes out. All right, I am much more pleased with the look than I had anticipated. <laughs> Not really the most glowing of endorsements, but okay. I am going to take, I think I'm gonna start with the periwinkle shade that we used, Curiouser and Curiouser, and I'm gonna see if I can contain that in my under eye area. Do I wanna do that? 
maybe I don't want to do that. I'm a little, because it's so powdery, I'm nervous about it getting everywhere. And I kind of want to use a few more shades. So let's try, let's try taking the pink, which is this shade right here. This is called Talking Flowers. And let's try putting that underneath the eyes and seeing how that plays out. I'm just gonna focus it on the outer half or so and then I'm going to take the green to the inner half, I think. This one seems to be a bit on the powdery side as well. Maybe that's just like a pastels thing, I don't know. So just a little bit here, connect it in just a little bit. Okay, and then Mad Tea Party, which is that sort of matte pastel green and take on the inner inner half or so just to kind of connect a bit of what we have going on on the top there and then just kind of switching back and forth until i get the intensity that i would prefer Okay, I can live with all this. I can live with all this. Um, yeah, okay. Let's add some mascara. I have been still loving my Amicole mascara. Just look at that difference. This is such a great mascara. It really is. I'm so happy I purchased it. Oh, I thought of the perfect lipstick. Okay, it's not one of my new ones, but I think it'll go perfectly with this look. Mascara on, give it just a second to dry. And while we're doing that, this is what we're gonna use. This is from um, Kaleidos. This is one of their cloud lip clays. Love these so much. I want so many of them. The one that I am just drooling over is Pink Himalayan. Oof. But this one is in the shade Bare. I love this formula so, so much. And I think this sort of muted pink is going to go perfectly with these eyes. See? Perfect. Perfect, perfect. For anyone that has not tried this formula, do yourself a favor, pick a few of them up. They are fantastic. They come out initially with this very moussey, very smooth whipped sort of formula, but once they dry down, they are budge proof, they are comfortable, they are fantastic. I love that they become transfer proof, but they don't they don't like collect funky in like any lines in your lips. They're just, they're so, 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 so good. So yes, here we have the final look. Let's talk about all these products, okay? All right, so this is the finished look. And I have to say, I feel like it came together really, really well. I was scared for the eyes, but I'm pleasantly surprised. It is a look that is well outside of my own personal comfort zone. But I think it came together in the end. So let's talk about all the new products that I've used. I kind of shared some of my thoughts along the way, but let's do a speed recap. Let's start with the, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's start with the primer. So the Milk Makeup Primer so far has been fine. I've used it just a couple of times. And one of the things that I had hoped for was that it would keep product from settling in my smile lines, and it does not do that, but I truthfully haven't found anything that does, so it's fine, um, and I will happily continue to use it. Jury is still out as to whether or not it's gonna help me over the summer since it's not summer yet, but I think it's a nice product. As for the under eye brightener from the Ulta House brand, it seemed to work fine. This is a very first impression, so I think the color was nice for my particular skin tone. I do not know if it comes in a variety of color correcting shades, depending on skin tone. 
as much as I hate to say it, based on previous experience, I'm thinking it probably doesn't, but I don't know. So I'm not gonna, not gonna speak out of turn, but just going with history there. Um, as far as the skin tint, the Iconic London Skin Tint, I really like it. I think that it makes my skin just look so healthy and luminous. It, of course, still looks like skin, but just perfected, and I really quite like it, and I'm very, very happy that I picked it up. I do think, for me, a brush is the way to go, just because I feel like what I'm looking for needs a little bit more coverage than what a sponge offers. But you know what, if you have beautiful flawless skin and you only need a kiss of something, go ahead and use a sponge because I think that's gonna be the perfect amount of coverage for you. It doesn't look like dewy or luminous, but it does look really nice and healthy. Um, so not flat, not matte, it's just, it's a lovely product. Um, I have gushed on and on and on and on about the Givenchy concealer. I absolutely love this. I am so thrilled that I picked it up and it has quickly become my new favorite concealer. Um, I do enjoy the Kosas powder. I feel like, again, just like this skin tint, it looks really healthy on my skin. It does bring a little bit of luminosity, but not in like a shiny or highlightery sort of way, just in a very healthy, lifelike sort of way. And I very much am enjoying it. I have also made no bones about the fact that this is heaven. Again, this is the most beautiful, wonderful cream bronzer I've ever used in my whole life. And I love it so much. I think of all of the things that I have here, this is the one, well, okay, these two, those are the ones that I would recommend at the very tippy top of the list, but this is a pretty good list. The blushes, no, just kidding. The, <laughs> the bronzer, the Pat McGrath bronzer is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It is a very finely milled um, and silky product and I really, really like the way that it looks on my skin. As far as the blushes go, I really, really love this Tower 28 blush. I think it, the formula on these is top notch, wonderful. Um, and I do like this shade. I just have to go a little bit lighter handed just based on my own skin tone. But I do think it's beautiful. If you are similar in skin tone to me, I would recommend checking out Magic Hour first because I think it's just a little bit more flattering. Um, but if you like a pinkier, mauvier tone, then this is a great option. Oh, the Sephora blush. Um, I I like it, don't get me wrong, I like it. It's just not the right color for me personally. Um, so I would like to pick up a couple more from the range, I, but I think I would rather go in store if I ever make it to a Sephora. There's not one that's very close to me. Um, and just sort of see what the colors look like in person because I do struggle sometimes to choose shades online, especially with like the Sephora collection where there are tons and tons of options. So I do really like this formula. I think the color is nice. I just have to go really, really light because it's just, it's not my perfect shade. The Cali Ray highlighter, I really have been enjoying a ton. I think it leaves a beautiful sheen to the skin. I tend to buff out my highlighters so that it's, a little bit more of a softer glow, but this is one that not only will do that for you, but you can also build it up to have a really impactful shine. So I do quite like this formula and I like this color and I'm really happy to have picked it up. Where we're kind of still on the fence is with this baby right here. It came together and it's not a bad palette I don't feel like. There are definitely some issues that I have personally. Um, for example, this shade right here is a black with micro glitters in it. Don't love that. This shade right here feels very out of place with the rest of the palette um, and it seems like it has kind of a, yeah, like a chunkier glitter. Um, but this shade right here there are no eye safety warnings, at least that I have seen, but this looks like a pressed glitter. Like this is chunky and that is not my personal preference. So that's what it comes down to with this palette. It is not my personal preference. I think that I will still continue to use it and I will use it as a companion palette with some other things. Like I said, I think the eye look came out really fun and I'm not mad about it at all. Is this gonna become my favorite palette? Not a chance, but is it fun? Sure. Sure. 
So there were definitely some items that I didn't get to today, but as I use them, I will either let you know how I feel about them or we will use them together. Definitely, if you have stuck around this long, thank you so much. I love you guys more than I can possibly say, and your support means everything to me. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, and please certainly subscribe before you leave. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day, and I will see you next time. Bye.